So, welcome, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for the second Teacher Academy webinar of School Education Getaway. School Education Getaway is an initiative of the European Union. It brings you updates about European policy and example of uh, innovation and practices in school education in Europe. This webinar today is about artificial intelligence, a hot topic, as artificial intelligence is uh, becoming a big part of uh, everyday life, including, of course, education. And with new technological developments, especially with digital transformation, new opportunities, but also challenges may arise. So it's important for teachers to become familiar with the basics of artificial intelligence. For this reason, today is with us Marco Neves, computer science teacher at uh, Agrupamento de Escolas de Badalaja. Marco is uh, an advisor on education technologies and a specialist in learning scenarios in the context of the current digital transformation and its impacts on education and more in general on society. So before leaving the floor to Marco, I remember you that you can post your questions in the chat box and we will go back to them as far as possible after the presentation. Also please note that this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be available soon after on the webinar webpage on the School Education Data Grid together with uh, Marco's presentation. So thank you very much, Marco, for joining us. I hand it over to you so you can introduce yourself more in details and start the presentation right away. Okay, Leonora, thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, for the invitation to talk about artificial intelligence and education. And it's a great pleasure to be here um, in this uh, webinar. And, and try to give you an, an idea about what is AI and all the, the impacts of AI. Um, in terms of this uh, presentation, in terms of this uh, webinar, uh, I will be uh, divided the presentation in three different main topics. Uh, the first topic, I will talk about artificial intelligence and try to give you a notion what is um, AI, just a short notion, not entering in technical details about what is AI. And the second topic, I will focus on the um, impact of AI, mainly in two uh, different areas. It will be concerning the labor market and also concerning the um, medium, because nowadays we are facing lots of challenges in what um, has to be with fake news. So I think it's a very important topic also. And AI is clear related to, with that. In the last topic, I will, of course, talk about education, about AI, and the way they are uh, related. During the um, webinar, you're going to have access to a Padlet. And uh, during the presentation, you are free to post on the Padlet and to interact. You can even comment on other participants' posts and even vote uh, about the things that we're going to share here during the presentation. And I think that this uh, really important for us to have this kind of interaction during the webinar. Before I start, I will just uh, give you some, some more information about me. I am teaching Portugal in a very beautiful village in the center of Portugal, is 100 kilometers north of Lisbon. And you can see here my school and the small village where I teach is called Bataya and is very well known because of the monastery that you can see here. And this is called Monastery uh, Bataya, uh, but the technical name is uh, Monastery of Santa Maria de Vitoria and is a very beautiful piece of architecture. And I would like you to show you the Monastery of Bataya, not only because it's a really uh, amazing building, but just to tell you that at the time there was no artificial intelligence available for the humans to build such an amazing thing. And this is some uh, like an introduction in my presentation today that we have to look at AI not like some kind of magic or like a silver bullet or even like a panacea for education, but we clearly need to be aware because the, the impact of AI are tremendous uh, nowadays. Before I start talking about um, AI in particular, I would like just to give you a brief notion of 
what I can call like a human framework or a history framework, what I call it, the why. And why today we are talking so much about AI. AI is something that is new, it's a start in around 1950. But why are we today talk about AI? And I will pick up in terms of the why just by showing you that is lots uh, of this has to be in the way that we have our perception in the universe and our perception in the world. And I will pick up some insights from this book. It's from uh, Luciano of Florid. And in, in this book, he describes that we are losing some things that we consider as exclusive from the human being, what he calls the centers. And I will just give you a brief um, idea when we talk about these centers, and they are mainly these four centers. We are talking about the, the universe, we are talking about the world, we are talking about the brain, and the last one that is related with AI today, we are talking about the intelligence. And there are four key moments in uh, the history of immunity that clear, make us understand the way that we are losing these things that we consider that are uh, exclusive to us. And I will just show you, starting with the first one, when we think that we are, we are the center of the universe, and we lose that um, idea of we being the center of the universe with Copernicus. And then we have the, the other one that we think we were the center of the world, and through Darwin, we clearly understand we are not anymore the center of the world. But if we are not the center of the universe and you, if we are not the center of the world, we at least we think that we are the only that could take decisions with conscience. And we have Freud tell us, no, that, that is not clearly true. So one last thing it was left for us in terms of the centers, in terms of this exclusivity, and that was the case of intelligence. But around the 1950s, this brilliant scientist, Alan Turing, he published a paper on a magazine and he posed this very, very important question. And the question was for the first time, we were challenged and thinking that maybe we, we were not the only ones that can think and we ask if machines can think. It was published in 1950. And for the first time, after all the other centers that we've been losing, we are in the one that nowadays, due to uh, lots of advancement in technology, we are facing this new, new challenge. And this takes us to a very important thing nowadays in terms of what we consider as intelligent, what we have this ideas of intelligence. And now I will give you just four brief, um, let's say, uh, concepts in terms of intelligence and the way that it's been um, uh, during the times and the way that we are facing and understanding in intelligence. And I will start with the first one that was very focused in the questions of the high key and maybe uh, making this straight line that everybody should have in the same times of intelligence. The second one that I like to share with you is give us to us from uh, Einstein, and, and Einstein focused the questions of intelligence, what we call the true sign of intelligence, not in knowledge, but in imagination. And uh, in terms of two more definitions and a lot of you and maybe all of you have this knowledge in terms of the multiple intelligence and this is given for, to us by Gardner and is a question that we can have different multiple intelligence and the one the last one that we were thinking about that we could be the only ones that have this capability and this is what are making very challenging the days that we are living today is give us to us from Leger and Uther and Leger and Uther tell us that intelligence is to achieve goals in a wide range of environments. But if we pay attention, it's not just a thing that is close to humans, but is, as they say in the definition, in terms of agent's ability. So 
We are living tremendous time, and these times are being shaped by artificial intelligence. And I would like to make you a question, and you can use a chat box just to give your opinion. I'm going to show you two images, and I will uh, ask you to tell me what best represents AI to you. The first image that I will show you is this one. So this is like uh, a robot. And the second one that I will show to you, the second image, is this one. And this is an umbrella. I, will, I would like to um, uh, hear from you on the chat box what for you best represents AI. And of course, I will be back um, to what I consider what best represents AI. And uh, it will be very interesting for us uh, to see in terms of the robot or the umbrella, in terms of this metaphor and the way that we are um, making this understand nowadays. Because there is lots of things that are happening today, even in the media, in terms of communication for in terms of what is AI and is AI is impacting our lives. And we as teachers and educators, it's very important for us to have this clear idea what is AI and how AI is impacted in terms of our lives. So this is really a clear important. So I will just move on and give you what maybe we consider one of the most acceptable uh, definitions in terms of AI. And this give us to us from John uh, McCarthy. And McCarthy, John McCarthy is, is considered as one of the fathers of um, artificial intelligence. And he defined artificial intelligence like this is the science and the engineering of making intelligent machines. So once again, we are touching in the key point about intelligence is not about only humans, but also in terms of other machines. And this makes us thinking about what is our clear place in terms of, of the world in the terms that we interact with other the different components of uh, society. And just to make uh, uh, open a little bit in terms of this definition about AI, we can see in different three topics how AI could interact. And we have the AI that can sense, and this is achieved by what we call natural language, machine vision, navigation, and so on. This is so one of the components. The second one that we have is AI that can think. And here we have planning, understanding, and this is given to us by machine learning and deep learning and all these algorithms that we have nowadays. And then we have another aspect, another component is AI that can act, that can act with the external world that is around all these agents that are making using of AI. And to support all this um, in terms of creation of AI, we have different uh, areas and different subjects, just uh, the ones that you can see there about computer science, statics, uh, optimization, some of them that are not here, like neuroscience and so on. So what we can clear um, identify in terms of AI, and I will be back to the challenge that I have proposed to you, is what best represents AI. And most of the time when we think about AI, because we have all these movies from Hollywood and so on, like the Terminator and the danger of humanity in terms of the, their existence. In my opinion, what clear represents AI is this umbrella, because AI is related with so many things, and so many things have happened in terms of AI that we can see like a support of different subjects and, 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 and different expertise areas that are be using in terms of AI. So this is just, um, let's say, a short introduction for you get this uh, better understand in terms of uh, what is AI. And as I said before, it's very important for us to have this clear un understanding and not just being closed in idea that AI is represent for a robot. Even uh, there is lots of AI agents that are not machines. They don't uh, need to have a body to be AI. 
we have lots of uh, software agents that act in terms of AI that don't have this physical re uh, representation. So it's, it's very important for us to understand, and I, uh, that's why I start my presentation in, in, in terms of this. Another thing that is also important when we are talking about AI is the different types of AI that we have. It. And nowadays, what we have, and I'm showing you here, two different types of AI is what we call the weak AI, and this AI that we have nowadays, and also something that we are trying to achieve that maybe I can agree on, on that or, or not, is what we call the strong AI. Weak AI is a kind of AI that could be very, very efficient, could be uh, per, uh, performance better than humans, but just in a particular area. It's also what we call the narrow AI. I will just give you a, a short example in terms of this. For example, we can have an AI that is very good playing uh, some particular game like chess. But if you ask that kind of AI to do a very basic thing that will not be able to do. So in terms of AI development, what we are trying to achieve is some kind of like a strong AI, AI that have the capabilities in terms of applying knowledge in different contexts. But this is something that is not happening now, uh, right now, that we don't have right now. What we have is AI that are very, very, as I was told you, to you, efficient, better than humans in particular areas, but cannot pick up the knowledge that they acquire to be applying to that different context. And where is AI present nowadays? Maybe some of you already know it, but I would like to do a quiz with you um, and I will present to you uh, 14 different slides, 14 different images. And I will stop around five seconds in each of the image. And I would like to ask you to use also the, the, the chatbot and we, you will just have to say yes or no if the image that I am presenting is related or not with AI. So I will start presenting and each of the slides, you just have to say yes or no if you think that that image has anything to do with AI. I will just present the, the, the first one. So this is the first one. And as I was telling you, I will just stop five minutes in each of the image. Okay, great. So I will just give it just one more second. And now I will just move to the next slide. This is the second one, second one. And it's great to see that you are interact and say your opinion in terms of the second slide. Fantastic. Okay. I will just move to the next slide. And in this one, I will just give you a, a short description. This is about uh, the game Go, that is considered as the most difficult game in the world. And we are seeing there the world champion, uh, Lee Sedol, and he was challenged by a machine. OK, I will move to the next one. And here, what you can see is what we call this digital digital assistants or digital voice assistants like Siri, Google Assistant, Alexa, and so on. Okay, great. I will just move to the next one. And here, as you can see, we are talking about weather prediction and just asking your opinion if AI is related or AI has anything to do with weather prediction. Okay, we'll just move to the next one. Number six, we hear we have talk about finance, credit, phishing, when someone tries to store to store our um, data from our bank account and so on. And it's great to 
see the way that you are interacting if there is anything related with AI. Okay, I will just move to the next one, number seven. And this, of course, has to be with uh, disease and trying to be used in medical terms to identify if according to ribologists, if there is anything that AI will be related. Okay, I will just move to number eight. And number eight is about all this streaming and such the one that we have here, Netflix, HBO, or Amazon. And do you consider or not there is something related with AI here? I will move to the next one. And the next one here is when we are using GPS, maps orientation, like Google Maps, Waze, or other similar tools to take us from point A to point B. And once again, it's your opinion. Great, I will just move to number 10. Uh, number 10 here, uh, I will just give you a, a, a little contest description. This is a classroom, and the students are using this bench on their heads. And maybe this could be something related with AI or not. Okay. Next one, this one has to be with, with, with fake news. Uh, we as teachers and educators is something that we are really concerned about and we really need to educate our students to be able to identify what is true and what is not true. And what I'm asking you is if AI is related to fake news also. Wait, I just move to the next one, number 12. And here we are talk about something that is called auto text generation and there is a description there and what is happening here is to have some kind of tool that is able to produce their own text and maybe something related with the eye and the next one i will just let you decide And of course, presenting all these different areas, I will just finish with this one. This is the last one. And of course, we are talking about sports in the particular here. We are talking about football. Okay. And I will just wait a few more seconds um, to hear from you if you consider that AI is even related with football. Okay, I was paying attention uh, attention on, on, on the chat box and, and, and I clearly see that most of you uh, choose uh, yes and uh, j just a few seconds in terms of, of, of for, for a review and what I want to say to you is all the 14 images that you saw they are, all of them, they are related with AI. So from here, you can have a clear idea how AI is so impacting in our life. Sometimes maybe without, we uh, have this clear notion that we are using AI, but all of them, even in the, I think is, is number 13 in terms of heart, um, the image that, that I show you, and I just can go back a, a little bit to this one, what you are seeing here is art that is producing by AI. So this was not painting by a human being. This was created by machines that are using artificial intelligence to create art. So as you can see, when I, in the beginning, I was uh, telling you about this challenge that we are not the, the, the only ones right now that have the capability of intelligence, artificial intelligence is, is even touched some of our skills that we consider the most as being human, like art, like creativity, and artificial intelligence is created. We will be back to uh, this particular topic a little bit more 
in uh, our, our webinar, I will just go to, to move, move on and give you in terms of the notion, and I think that you will now clear understand in terms of how AI is impacting our lives. I like to do the, the technical, uh, technological contest in terms of AI, and this is what I call the big shift. So what is happening nowadays that has this tremendous impact and the way that is making clear for us to, to, to understand what is surround, uh, surround us, what is happening right now. And this is mainly based what is the digital transformation that we are living. Um, we cannot be very precise in terms of this, but we, uh, we can even put this like in a timeline. And if we clear have this notion from the different ages that we are living, and if we go back we can have this age of agriculture, then we move to the age of industrialization. And nowadays we are living this age of the digital. So this is this profound digital transformation we are living. And they are supported in terms also what we call the industrial revolution. And you know that we have the, the first one that was support for the steam engine. We have the second one that was uh, happening mainly about electricity. We have the, the third one about electronics and IT. And we are now leaving this one. And this one is so profound because it's mi mixing what is the technical hardware part in terms of us, the cyber and the biological. So it's something that is clear making the big difference in, in terms. This is some people call this not only the fourth uh, industrial revolution, but also the first intelligence revolution. Is in, in the time that is supported by artificial intelligence and other technologies that today are completely shaped in the way that we have clear understand, not in terms of only society, but of economy, in terms of culture, in terms of politics even. And this is maybe the five, uh, the um, most profound in terms of technology. The first one is about IoT, and IoT is what we call the Internet of Things, when we have everything that is connected. And is predicted in, in this year to have around 30 billion sensors, and they are connected. And we talk about the sensor, we talk about the smartwatch, we talk about the TV, we talk about the car, we talk about the fridge, we talk about everything, and these sensors are always producing data. And one thing that is really neat for AI today is a, a big amount of data, what we call big data. And just to have a clear notion in terms of the exponential growth of data, 90% of the data was produced in the last two years. And added to this, we also have artificial intelligence that is the power in terms of the algorithms that have these capabilities to sense and to understand. And what will be the hyper-connection on all of this will be the 5Gs, as we can see, that is already being uh, advertised and will give you this um, very, very uh, speed connections in terms of the way that we are using our smartphones. And in the top of this, in the top of in the bottom, it's difficult to, to, to put it, we have quantum computing that will increase exponential the, capaci the capabilities in terms of the machines in terms of power computing. So, all of this is bringing us to us different things and is bringing to us changes in the way that we, we interact with each other and we interact with all this digital interface. This is what I call the other intelligence. Of course, with the question mark, it's not saying that they are clear just in terms of, 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 of intelligence, but I will just give you some of the examples and some of these examples are being used by you for sure. And I will just Put the first question, when you want to decide where to go, what you are using today? Maybe not a map on paper support, Google Maps. If what is designed for us, what to watch. And we're gonna have Netflix, HBO, and other platforms, and what to buy. These recommendations are given to us by Amazon. And who to fire? To decide, and this case could be an example like Uber, because the the people that are working there are com uh, constantly be evaluated by some kind of algorithm, and all this metric and, and analytics 
that is decide the performance in terms of the things that you are doing. So it's not a human that will be fired a human. Now we have an algorithm that is decide if you deserve to keep in terms of your job or not. And what information to see? Who is deciding that? Maybe platforms like Facebook. And with whom to date? Who will decide? Maybe a platform like Tinder. So everything in terms of this is also reshaping the way that we interact and all these kinds of different content. So some people just saying, okay, because all of this, we maybe are becoming a little bit more stupid. I don't completely agree with that. If you are not using our time in terms of these basic tasks, that means that we have more free time in terms of develop more complex tasks. So it's not a question in terms of the technology, but it's in the term of the way that we are using uh, technology. So I will just give you another example for us to have this clear understanding in terms of how the machines are reaching in terms of levels, particular in terms of the capability of executing and all this is doing for the computational power that we have nowadays. This is a, a Google, um, let's say, tool platform, is, uh, and the name is called Talk to Books. And you can use it. You just uh, go to Google and write Talk to Books, and we directly will give you the link. And what is really amazing from this is that you can, you can post questions to this platform. It's called uh, Talk, Talk to Books. And uh, I'm just giving you here uh, one example. Uh, I, I just posed this question, where are we going to achieve singularity? And he automatically, in half a second, he just give me what, let's say, two, two, two answers for that. What is really interesting is these systems reads 100,000 books in half a second. So you can read around 600 million sentences and will not give me the answer just in terms of match what I ask with information that he's uh, looking for, but is give me that basic on the semantic research that is conducted by this system. So we have a system that is able to read a hundred thousand books in just half a second. Um, I try to, to read a few books, but I can never reach this number. It's almost impossible for me. So this is just to give you the notion that we cannot compete with these machines in what they are directly very uh, fantastic in terms of doing. And this also opens a lot of questions, even in terms of education. But just to keep in this context of this digital uh, transformation, just take a look, just a few, a few seconds to what happens in, uh, in the internet in, in just one minute uh, in, in the last year. And it's very interesting also to see if you look for chart from the previous years and you see the uh, exponential in, in, in increment in terms of this. I, I will just highlight some of them. For example, in just one minute on YouTube for 0.5 million of, 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 video, of videos are viewed. If, if you go, for example, in terms of Netflix, you see how many hours in just one minute, okay? So we are on the edge of this huge digital transformation that is brought to you also in terms of all the capabilities of the artificial intelligence and the way that are interacted to us. And also other very important things in, in the terms, in the gap that is creating between generations. And uh, I really love this sentence uh, that we maybe be the last generation of humans that knows what offline means. Maybe, maybe, or not maybe, that will happen for sure, is the next generation for them being offline is something that makes no sense. They will always be online. They all will be connected. They will be hyper-connected. So this completely shapes the landscape in the terms that we are having this understanding of the world and understanding of, of ourselves. And what we have is 
Okay, so we have all these contexts. We are clearly understand in terms of this digital transformation, but what are the impacts? And here in terms of the impact, the impacts of um, uh, artificial intelligence, I will, I was told you in the beginning, I will focus in, in, in two areas. The, the first one is about the labor market. And as, as we know, the, um, if we look to the previous uh, industrial revolution, the first one, the second one, and the third one, they all of them have a very strong impact in the labor market in the way that we understand work. And but there is one particular thing that is very important to notice nowadays is that the three previous uh, industrial revolution the impact or the big impact in terms of labor market were mainly in what we call the blue collar workers and these workers are associated with rotting's um, uh, jobs or mainly in terms of, of industry and the people that are working in what we call the white collar jobs and let's say that is the kind of jobs that demands uh, uh, bigger expertise and so on they were not so affected but what we are seeing today is, in terms of blue collar, what is happening is, for example, jobs like drivers will be tremendously affected. And this will not mainly in terms of jobs that are, and we know that we have uh, uh, truck drivers, taxi drivers, and, and, and so on. And these things are being developed, and we cannot say that we'll be in five or, or in 10 years or in 15 years. And we have also to have the clear notion that maybe this will start in some uh, geographical uh, spots in the world and maybe not so, many, so, so much in, in the others. We, have to have, we need to have this clear understanding that the, 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 this digital transformation doesn't have one day and, and one hour to start. It will be different in terms of what is happening in different parts of the world. But another one is this one, we are talking about shops and how many people that we have that are employed on shops. This is an example of Amazon Go, and Amazon uh, just opened these stores and there is no human in employer in terms of working in that store. You just enter, you are identified with your smartphone, you pick up the items that you want to buy and then you just leave and everything thing is automatically and it will be a discount automatically on your bank account. Another impact is like this one in uh, warehouses where we are seeing more and more and these big companies as, as, as Amazon, for example, is one of them. Most of particularly the job in terms of the deliveries uh, are made by this, uh, let's say, smart machines that are replacing in terms of humans. So, this will have a tremendous impact in terms of jobs and the labor market and will be very difficult in terms of education, in terms of society, because what will happen to the students that we are not able to prepare with the competence and the skills that are needed for these new times? Before that, we know that was this big range of jobs that they can be used. But nowadays, what will happen if we don't prepare well our students and they don't have, let's say, this possibility to go this kind of, of, of work that I was showing to you. But it's not only in terms of the blue collar jobs, it's also in terms of the white collar jobs. And this, once again, will be very challenging for uh, all of us because in the previous um, uh, revolutions, we didn't have this impact of in terms of these jobs. We never feel this in, in our uh, history of our humanity. So I will just give you some examples for you to understand. The, the first one is in terms of one profession that we maybe consider that will be very difficult to be replaced in any spot by uh, some kind of smart machines. And just let me make this point. That doesn't mean that the all profession or the all job will be replaced. What could be happen is some of the tasks of that jobs will be replaced by this kind of this smart agent. And we will need be to prepare in the way that we are of education and our students to be able to interact with this system. 
Another example in terms of white collar jobs is, for example, on medicine. You never imagine that uh, jobs like doctors and so on will be challenged by this kind of um, agent. Just another one, nursery, for example. But it doesn't stop here. This one also, in terms of courts, in terms of judge, have this kind of thing is a little bit confused for us. We are talking about something that is very human, is the capability of judgment. And we can have machines that can be doing that. And this is another one that we may be considered to be safe in terms of all the context of the digital transformation. And maybe this one also in terms of finance. So once again, I was uh, I really like to make this point very, very, very clear is is not about the old job. Mainly what we have so now and be able to understand is in terms of tasks and some of the tasks that could be automatized and some of the tasks that can be replaced by these systems. So we arrive to the point in what is happening uh, with our challenge in terms not in the competition between humans and humans, but for the first time we are facing different kinds of challenge. And even in this type of jobs, we are being put side by side in terms of what we can be able to do that will make us the difference between humans and, and, and robots. And this is also touching in the point in the way that we understand our life was structured in terms of society and the idea that we have of a, a job for a life. And what we can take on this is things are changing so, so strongly that we cannot have this, let's say, utopia idea that we are in, in school and we have our students and we want to prepare for some kind of profession and for from starting from uh, there they are completely safe what we are clear see is instead of having one profession what is uh, happening is a mashup of micro jobs different micro jobs different projects where they are involved but at the same time they are working they have the need also to be learning constantly because they are being challenged for this so this is some kind, we are the last generation to know what offline means, but somehow we are also the last generation in terms of have this model, education, work, and retirement. What I'm seeing right now is we have this multi-stage life where we have education, and then we have an employment on organization, only taking part on the project, and we have a transition, then we are self-employment. So changing so the way that is happening, and at the same time in terms of education, we clearly understand what is the context that we are moving. And if we have this clear understand about the context, it will be easier for us as teachers and educators to understand that we have the need to change. But before I enter in the education topic, I would just like to give you some um, few examples in terms of uh, how artificial intelligence is also impacting in media. Um, this one is about the fake news and also about the replacement of journalists. But another one is in terms not only fake news, but also what we call deep fakes. And deep fakes is not about writing tests, but is the possibility of having a video of someone and using artificial intelligence, we can put that person, that video, say something that he never said or something that he never think or something he never agreed. But if you can do this with video with artificial intelligence, then we can do it also with voice. Just take a look at the bottom of this slide, for example. We have what is called this deep voice software that can clone anyone's voice within just less than four seconds of audio. So we don't need so much in terms of the things that are being used here. So this is very challenging. Sometimes we have to have to be clear, understand. Here, I cannot show you the video, but you, you have the link to the video, is using artificial intelligence, picking up just one single image 
you will be able to give life to this image and you can put this uh, image like they were alive. This is just an, an example of a Giaconda and then you can um, explore it in terms, in terms of, of, of the video. The same one in terms of media, and I have been showing you this slide before, is in terms of writing the fake news. So these fake news are produced not by humans, but are produced by these um, machines. Now I would just uh, like to ask you again uh, just two, few, two questions. I'm showing two, two images, and I just want to ask to you if these two images are from real persons or not. So this is the first one. You can use the, the chat box again, and you can just uh, tell me if this is a, 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 a real person, a real kid or not. Will we'll be very interesting to uh, hear from you, just to have this clear notion. OK? Because we are just running a little bit of time, I will just move to the next one. And once again, I will ask you if you consider that this is, this is a real person or not. Some of you are saying yes, some of you are saying no. Okay, great. None of these two pictures that you are seeing there, they are not real person. They are pictures created by AI. And you can explore this because this is uh, produced using uh, um, a particular type of, of deep learning, machine learning. And if you go to this website here, the website, I think you can see it, is this person does not exist. And every time you refresh your browser, AI will create a new uh, face, will create a new person. So we are clear in times that are so challenge to us that is very, very difficult even for us to clear know what is real and what is not real. And the next one, I don't know, this is, is not playing the video, uh, but you, you can see here, uh, down here, this is um, pre models. But this, this is, is, I think, is from a Chinese um, startup. And what they can do with artificial intelligence, they can create in real time different models. They can be uh, using different clothes and so on. So they can produce this kind of virtual fashion moments with models without the need of human models. Um, another uh, example is in terms of art. And you remember the slide, I think it was the 13, if I'm not completely uh, wrong, about that image. And then I was asking to you if that was related with uh, artificial intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence or not. And as I said to you, all that image, they have something related with artificial intelligence. And this one, this particular one, it was created by an AI algorithm. And it was sold, and it was sold um, almost about half a million dollars. And we not play. What happened was an algorithm that was training, and they analyzed lots of lots of lots of different uh, paintings, and then they produced this one. And one very important question here, is, as you can see on the slide, if AI can create art, we'll, we will own the copyright of this uh, art that is being created. Will be the algorithm, will be the one that created the algorithm, will be the one that created the algorithm. Just here to give you some basic ideas about the questions that we're having today. And of course, we know this, that we mainly we are living in a bubble for all these interaction and recommendation system that most of the time we just see what they want us, us to see. And this, uh, once again, in terms of using all these different contexts and all these different interface that we are using today in the terms for us to clear understand what is real, what is not real when we are digital, when we are analogic. But of course, there is also lots of opportunities when we are talking about artificial uh, intelligence. And the question is, we have to look and have this clear notion about in terms 
this particular case of the jobs landscape, and this is from the World Economic Forum for 2022, and we have clear in terms of identifying what is the, 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 the jobs and, and the tasks and, and, and skills that will, will be needed. And we can see here, and of course this is a prediction, that the number of jobs that will be uh, raised and created by AI will be around 133 million, and the number of jobs that will be destroyed will be around 75 million. So we have here, in terms of, of, of gain, around 58 million jobs. So the question here is, as I was uh, showing you in the beginning of, of the presentation, and is not that we go, don't will have jobs. The question is, what skills are we going to need for that job? And the problem is how the educational systems are preparing the students for all these things that have happened and that I've been showing here to you. And so maybe it's not a problem, the number of jobs, but is maybe some shortage of skills that is new jobs that we, some of them we already know what kind of jobs will um, be created. And for some of them will be very difficult for us we have this clear understanding in terms of the new jobs that will be created. And I was telling you there will be around 58 million new jobs by 2022. So maybe one of the advice that we can give you is become more employable than an algorithm. Because if you can just keep doing the same things in the same way without being able to adapt and be able to be flexible, we will not beat an algorithm because the algorithm is working 24 hours uh, uh, per day, seven days per week, and doesn't need to, to, to stop. So we need to focus in what really can distinguish uh, us from the machines in terms of problem solving, in terms of collaboration, in terms of creating a new knowledge, in terms of the skills that will be very uh, important and we'll have a key uh, role point in terms of the jobs that will be created. And of course, there have to be this connection between the art and also the soft skills. And just to finish this particular topic, um, some of, 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 of the advice is like this metaphor that you say, you were yourself before you get conducted. And just to make the contest, of this uh, sentence is, you know that Kodak, they were like the, the masters of analogic photos. And I don't know, maybe 20 years ago or something, that was this uh, guy working in the ID in Kodak and he was able to produce the first digital photo, uh, photo picture. And that was around 0 0.0002 pixels. And he takes it to the administration of Kodak and show this discovery. But they say, oh no, forget that. So we will, we are, let's say, um, have all this market in terms of uh, analogical thoughts and so on. We are not interested in that. A few years after, just start to appear the digital machines and so on, and we know what happened to Kodak. The opposite was term of Uber. Uber see clear that due to digital transformation that they have this opportunity in terms of market. So this is some kind of example, the way that we need to adapt to this new content. And entering in my last topic in terms of education and is what maybe could interest more for us as teachers and educators, but we need to understand first the context. If you don't have this clear idea of content, if you don't have this clear idea what is happening, even when someone is asked us to change, we always post the question, but why? But in terms of, of education, in the way that we are preparing our students nowadays, and this, of course, there is lots of amazing exceptions in, in terms of when we talk about education, the way that we are preparing our students, and even some efforts in, in trying to change so we can be able to answer all these questions and be able to see the opportunities and for our students to have all these um, opportunities. Is sometimes educational systems, they are too slow in terms of change. And that would be not such a big problem 20 or 30 years ago. But the way things are happening today with the velocity, the exponential growth in terms of change, we clearly need to be more 
uh, assertive and at the same time not taking so much time in terms of what the change that we are clearly needed. And we have understanding that what is happening right now is that we need uh, clear have the need to focus in how we are better than machines. And we, what we are better than machines is our human skills that really makes a difference when you are comparing in terms of, of the machine. Um, Tobin Walsh, he, he wrote this uh, very interesting book and, uh, and other books related with education. And he focuses in four, four skills and four skills competence. One is the emotion intelligence. The second one, of course, is in terms of creativity, the need to adapt. That is clearly a very important one, as I show him to you in terms of the life stage model. And another one is in terms of grid. And we need clear need to have this context happening in terms of educational system to prepare our students. And um, Yuval Harari, and, and, and you know it about the books and about the talks we are giving, uh, and the books uh, Homo sapiens and Homo deus, he tells us that once again, we, and more than we, our students, they will have to re reinvent themselves a lot of times in terms of the challenge that will be um, posed in, in front. So this means that our educational system could not be slow as it has been along the time. And we cannot only, only have this kind of format in terms of delivering education in terms of our students. And also, there is the problem of the gap generation. This um, sentence is from Justin Aglu, and uh, Justin Aglu, which is the um, pedagogical director of a school in the United States, is the model district school, and he was the first public uh, school in the United States to integrate him uh, in the curriculum, the thematic on AI from kindergarten to, to high school in different subjects working with a different approach, and it is said me that is the clash, let's say, from the artificial intelligence generation and us, that we are the cassette tape generation. So this is the big bag gap, sorry. Maybe some of the big gaps that we haven't seen in terms of, of uh, generations and the way that we have clear, have this understanding, also the questions is the importance that we have in terms of the digital. And for example, if you pay attention to our students, and most of them, they all have what we call smartphones. But nowadays, they don't call a smartphone. We just call it a phone. Because for them, that is part of their life. It's not a question of be smart. It's a question of their gadget, the way that they interact, the time that they are outside of the analogic world, the, the, the dynamics that they're creating on this uh, uh, digital world in terms of what is meant offline and what is meant online. And we have different organizations that are thinking about this. And for example, we have UNESCO. UNESCO is telling us that we need to rethink education in the age of artificial intelligence and, and new technologies. Um, I have this in terms of, of, of idea and the way of educational systems and this dynamics is that nowadays with all the smart agents and software and AI and so on, the questions is if we teach a student like a robot, we will behave like a robot. But the questions is that they will not have these capabilities of a smart robot. So robot, sorry. So in terms of what we are designed, in terms of what we are proposing nowadays for, for um, education, is the difficulty that we have in terms of what we are preparing our students. And of course, artificial intelligence is very important here. But there is some things that we know that are very important in terms of our students to develop. So this is nothing new, but is the difficulty that we have in creating the, the contests that are be able for our students to be able to be great communicators, to be able to work in environments where collaboration is crucial. 
in terms of they have the uh, skills to do critical thinking and the way that we need them to be creativity so they can add value to the things that, they, that, that exist. But these things that we clearly understand and we call the 21 century skills, even that we are already in 2020, should be more than ever, they should be put in first place in the terms that we are thinking about education. And I always say that in these four C's, there is a C that is missing for me. We have, of course, communication, we have critical thinking, we have creativity, we have collaboration. But for sometimes that I have say that is very important, and even in, in, in neuroscience that is uh, associated with learning, another C is missing uh, right here. And I, this C is a C that is one of the most important things in terms of motivate our students. And we need that like, the educational context in the, in, in the age that we are living do by artificial intelligence is more important than ever. And we have the obligation in terms of creating the educational scenarios and educational contests. So we are able in terms of preparing our students to face and to live in the world of AI with enormous challenge, challenge, but at the same time with also lots of opportunities. And this, in terms of education, they need to be inquiring, they need to post questions, they need to fail, they need to learn, they need to relearn. Otherwise, they are just thinking in one way that is what machines are very good in, in terms of, of doing. And Given this scenario and giving this some ideas in terms of uh, the way that we are thinking um, AI in the context of, of education, I would like to share to you in the, um, some ideas and some proposals of things that you can start doing uh, to introduce AI in education and to start introducing AI in your classroom. And we have to uh, need to have the idea that we are not talking about very expensive techno technological gadgets or something like this. There is lots of things that we can do it even without these all kinds of these um, computers and all kinds of things that are some kind of very interesting and plugged uh, things that we can do also. But I will give you some, some, some examples if you are interested in apply AI and in education. But before I go to there, I, I would like to make the reference to three uh, ways that should already start to be discussed and should already start to be integrated in terms of curriculum when we talk about artificial intelligence and when we talk about education. And these three different areas has to seem to be related with the first one is learn about AI. As I was being presenting in terms of this uh, presentation, the world is changing so much that we need to prepare our students so they can live in this uh, AI world and they are uh, be able in terms of all the opportunities that are being created. The second area is learn for AI. And in terms of, 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 of learn for uh, AI, and as I was saying, uh, learn about AI and also they being creators of artificial intelligence solutions, the way that it can adapt on this context. And the last one has to be Learn with AI. What kind of tools, platforms that are being developed with AI can be used in the classroom? And in this particular topic, I have lots of concerns. And these concerns focus mainly in developing AI solutions that will be used mainly to keep the outdated pedagogical strategies that we have nowadays. Developing these kinds of solutions, tools, and platforms that mainly focus on prepare our students to make an exam. If you are using AI and to put AI in the classroom with this purpose, we are not doing what we really need to do. What we need is tools and platforms in terms of AI that are, helps our students in terms of collaboration, in terms of communication, in terms of critical thinking. 
That will need AI. I don't want an AI system in my classroom that put the students in front of a computer, it put his headphones and he's completely isolated and it just help it or supported by an AI agent or something like this. No, I don't want that this happen in the classroom where the human factor is completely wiped out. It's not the way that AI should be used on the classroom in terms of our students. And AI is in, in uh, their self, the capability is to do more than that. The problem is when we have these AI solutions and they are being developed without the participation of teachers and education and the people that are related with education. In terms of this, there is this book that I would like to make a reference and it was written by Wayne Holmes, Maya Bialik and Charles Fadel and uh, is, is, is a book that I always advise to, 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 to be read for uh, people that is interested in artificial intelligence and, and education. Is, I really recommend in, in terms of this book. So, thinking about how AI should be applied and in these different, three different uh, topics, as I was telling you, we need our students to learn about AI, they will be need to create AI, we will need people in computer science that will be creating AI, we need our students to learn to live in an AI world, and we also need to have tools and platforms that help our students in terms of the classroom, what we can't learn with AI. But on the classroom, and right nowadays, in terms of AI be present on the classroom on 2020, this is like an example of a classroom in the industrial uh, times when due to the, 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 the shifts of the industrial revolution, we need to create this system that gives support to all these needs of education. And this is just an image in terms of how a classroom at the times look like. And maybe we can see some difference or not between our classroom nowadays. And don't forget that we are talking about artificial intelligence. And we are here talking about machine for the first time that challenge us in something that we consider that will be exclusive to human beings. And we are talking about intelligence. And the way that the evolution of ed education and what maybe we can achieve with artificial intelligence on the, on, on the classroom is instead of this traditional approach where we divide in these different uh, containers the, the students according to these cognitive capabilities, according to their motivation and so on, we'll be able to have a true personalized learning. But once again, with the human interaction, with the support of the teachers, not just put the students, let's say, in the hands of some software agent, some uh, AI algorithm. And this should be clear one of the goals in terms of using artificial intelligence and education. And some of the examples. So we are, as teachers, what we can do, what we can use in terms of putting AI so they can be used by our, our students. And here there is different, uh, different approach and different ways of doing that. Uh, here on this slide, I'm, I'm focused in terms of the language uh, interaction, uh, a branch of AI that we call natural language processing and NLP. And one of the examples, and there is some examples of, of schools, they have integrated these devices as Mm, uh, Alexa, Siri, and so on, in terms of his intelligent digital assistants, that would be an example. Also, the chatbots, intelligent chatbots that can interact with the students. Machine translation, for example, could be another example, or even the intelligent digital assistant. So, this is some kind of tools and platforms that we can be using on the classroom in terms of integrated AI and be used by our students. There is uh, of course, lots of platforms nowadays that could that can be used for this. This is just one 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 of the examples. This was developed um, in uh, I, uh, MIT and is called a robot uh, tutor and is what integrated in, in this kind of AI platforms called ITS or intelligence tutoring systems that can be used in terms of personalizing 
um, in education for our students. Another example is from Carnage um, Mellon University. And this is another system that can be also used and integrating. It's called Mafia. And it's one, one of, the, of the examples that can be used and is powered by artificial intelligence. Of course, we have others that we can easily integrate it. For example, some of you, or maybe all of you, you, you know about Duolingo. And Duolingo is mainly an app that helps you or your students in terms of um, learning different language. And it's also this kind of support in terms of direct the learning process of the students according to the results and, and, and all the data that we will be collecting in terms of interaction of the students. There is even some, some studies that say that the use of Duolingo would be more effective than traditional approach in terms of learning language. So this is clear one of the examples. I'd like to share another one. This is very interesting for math teachers. It's called Photomat. And Photomat is something that you can use on your smartphone. You just write an equation and we just point the smartphone with the camera and automatically we have all the solution. Of course, the math teacher will start to say, oh my God, this is very complicated. So if the, the app is doing so, my students will not develop what I consider as very important in terms of abstraction and so on. The question here is, how do we look at the way that we teach math if you have these apps and we have this solution? So the question is not safe. No, this is forbidden. The question is how I think in different strategies and different approach once my students have this. Because if they have this outside of the classroom and don't have this kind of AI solutions to use inside of the classroom, the gap that I was telling you about the artificial intelligence generation and the cassette uh, generation will be bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, that will be clearly uh, a, a problem uh, for us. And if you want to try AI on, on the classroom, I will just give you here some examples of something that you can be using with your students. This is uh, Movix AI, and this is mainly a recommend system in terms of your uh, interest in terms of movies. So what is happening is using this, this, this platform, you just choose a, a few movies, and according to the movies that you choose, the system automatically will feed what we think that is connected with, with, with our students. And with this platform, this could be the start for very interesting discussing with your students for them try to understand what is happening in the background of these systems and the way that they, they interact with, with, with this system. Another example that we can use with your students also is this platform that is called Talk to Transformer. And this is based in one of the slides that I show you about GPT that is able to auto text generation. And with Talk to Transformer, you just have to write the beginning of the sentence. And when you click complete text, the system automatically will write the test, the rest what it is, uh, let's say, in terms of, 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 of being using. So imagine. And we are just in the beginning of these AI systems and solutions, and they have lots of faults, and they are not quite precise as we really like. But imagine in terms of the evolution, in terms, uh, in terms of the velocity of this thing has happened, that you ask your students to write about something, and they just go to these kind of platforms, and they put the topics and the test. The test is automatically written, and even in very original ways. So this is something that we have really to think to think about just some of other examples. If you want to start um, use some deep learning algorithms in terms of machine vision and um, in terms of recognizing image, sound, and pose, we have this one from Google. Also, is called Teachable Machine. It's very interesting. You don't need to install nothing. We you just need uh, a browser and internet a connection. And according to the developers, none of the information of the data will be collected. And you can see clear and explain to your students how this, uh, 
how this uh, kind of algorithms do work and the, the way that they can interact. And even for them to have ideas to create other products with this uh, very simple example. Another one, if you want to create some kind of AI solutions, and this makes the connection to Scratch, is called um, uh, machine learning uh, for kids is, a, is another example that you can you, you can use. And sometimes we also need, in terms of a framework that gives you this clear notion about the way that we can start to interact um, and starting to discuss AI with our students. And one of these uh, frameworks uh, was developed by uh, a work group called AI for K-12, and they um, organized this framework in what they call the five, uh, five big ideas in terms of AI and in terms that we can start um, introduce AI. And, and, and these um, five big ideas, they are divided on perception, so the, the way that computers, agents, software perceive the world using sensors. The second one is about reasoning and representation. The third one is about learning. So machines that can learn, we give them data and they, they will be able to learn without human interaction. The number four is natural interaction. And in this case, we have all these examples that I show you about these uh, smart digital assistants. And uh, number five, and also very important, is about the social uh, impact, the social impact that all of this have in our lives. Um, if you are interested on this, you have the link here, but if you go to Google and you just search for AI for T12, you're going to have access to all the information, or even if you have any questions related with this, then you can send them and you can contact them, and it will be a pleasure for me to, to talk with, with you um, about it. Um, another possibility to integrate AI and to start uh, talking about your students uh, um, about AI and using the, these five big ideas that I was uh, telling you about AI is to do this um, short um, course about AI. It's called AI plus me. It's translated for, uh, you can see here, different uh, language uh, and it's completely free and you can uh, use it with your students. So you can go to this link here, uh, edu.readyai.org slash courses slash AI plus me and use the, the, the students that complete this, um, this, this um, learning um, event, they even receive a certificate, and it's a very interesting way, a very simple one. In just one hour time, you can put your students have their first contact and try to have their first understand in terms of AI in the classroom. So this is a, a very interesting in terms. If you want to start to do that, that will be clear a good a good idea. And just to finish, because I think I'm almost in the in the end of of, of my time is uh, what could be a possible way in all these things that I present to you and all these things that are happening and the way that we are challenged in terms of this artificial intelligence and clear, understand we are not talking about these terminator machines or something like this, is the way that we really need to understand what is happening outside of school. And this is mainly some uh, of my thoughts in terms of this. And I just pick up this uh, sentence from Ian LeCun, and Ian LeCun is one of the most important experts in terms of deep learning. He just won the Alan Turing Award last year with uh, two more experts on the area. And he, for me, he says something that is very, very interesting. is our intelligence is what makes us human. And AI is just an extension of that quality. So we should be focused on AI to extend our intelligence, not focus on AI to replace human intelligence. And this, I think, is one of the most powerful messages that we can pass to our students are really connected with this. And we could not forget that our students, they will be the engineers of the future and they will be 
creating AI solutions. There is lots of other things that is very important to discuss with your students about ethics, about bias, and so on, that are built in on the artificial um, intelligent systems. But this will be another another uh, discussion. So, but this is one of the very important things. So, in my opinion, what we need is to have the artificial and the human intelligence, and they combine. They have to augment our intelligence, and if they augmented our intelligence, we will be, be able to create amazing things. And nowadays, we have clear some big, big challenge that we are facing right now. This a challenge related with climate change and other very important things, and we really need, in terms of have these capabilities using together in terms of artificial and in terms of human intelligence. So what we hope is with this boom that is happening in terms of digital transformation, in terms of artificial intelligence, that we as humans, we can choose the right, the right way. We can choose the way that will uh, guide us not to this, um, I think, uh, this cover of the New Yorker and what Yuval Harari called in one of these books that will be the useless class if you don't pay attention in the way that artificial intelligence is being developing. And what it tells about useless class is not the people that struggle to live because they have a job and they receive a very low wage. It's people that are not interested anymore to society because machines can do with the job that these people were doing before. And we, we humans decide, not technology. Technology don't have, at least now, the capability to decide. And we can go in the way to a new Renaissance movement, or if we are not aware, we can enter and what we can call a digital dark wage. But I think for sure that we as humans will be wise enough to choose the right way and that will be able to do it. And just this last slide that is think that is very important for us as teachers and educators, that we will never forget that one of the most dangerous sentence in the language, the language is we think that we haven't always done it this way, but this time we have to do it on a different way because what we are seeing, all the challenge, they are by far very, very impacted and you will have a tremendous impact in our lives. Thank you. This was what I have to share here with you and I just hope that is not the end, but maybe just the beginning of a great adventure. Thank you, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Marco. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we run out of time, so there, there is no room for questions. But I just want really to thank you because it was a incredible journey. This presentation it was really interesting to see how the, your introduction uh, triggered uh, a lot of common fears and doubts in uh, our participants, uh, starting with uh, the, the fear of uh, losing. Um, control of our privacy um, and uh, the ethical dilemma of uh, responsibilities in um, the development of artificial intelligence. And um, then moving on, the, the real or perceived uh, uh, contraposition between a curriculum uh, uh, based on uh, skills or uh, knowledge. And finally, I really, I really appreciate your your final remark, your final remark about how important uh, the human factor is when we talk about artificial intelligence. And I can see uh, how our participants really stress out the fact that uh, one key element is always uh, not only the human factor but the teacher factor. So without the innovative, innovative um, teachers, nothing really can happen in uh, classrooms. And um, I would like to move to this final slide. 
because we would really, really appreciate if you could fill in the survey, uh, the, I'm sorry, the feedback survey. And at the end of the um, completing the feedback survey, you will uh, um, have access to the link to download uh, your certificate. Uh, we will leave this slide on for the next 24 hours. If you have any um, difficulties in completing the survey and download the certificate, please do not hesitate to get in touch with our um, support uh, services on School Education Gateway. Um, Marco, again, thank you very much. I don't know if you want uh, to add anything very briefly. Uh, once again, in order, I would just um, want to thanks again for, for the, the, the opportunity. It was a, a big pleasure to be here to, to share about what I think and I consider and uh, it was understandable during the presentation, something that is really important and we as educators and teachers, we need to, to be aware and to clearly understand what is uh, happening so we can clearly use education to prepare our students not only for the future, but um, for today. And of course, um, it's always very important when we have the opportunity to share what we um, think about the tremendous, uh, amazing things that are happening uh, right now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so once again, thank you very much for joining us and thank you, Marco, of course. Uh, I shared in the chat box again a link to the Padlet so the conversation can uh, keep continuing there. And I hope to, uh, hope to see you all uh, to the next um, Teacher Academy webinar that we will announce soon on um, School Education Getaway. So again, thank you very much, and uh, see you to the next webinar. Goodbye.